Wizards, my name is Alex Rosenberg from Zelda Universe and welcome to a really cool thing. This is happening. Today I am here at the Imperial Theater in New York City, home of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, a Broadway show based on war and peace with music inspired by the Legend of Zelda. Today I'm going to be sitting down with the creator Dave Malloy about how video games and pop culture influence his Tony nominated score. So I want to first uh, start off by congratulating you on everything that's happened with Great Comet from Ars Nova to Casino, the Meatpacking District, and then next door to uh, ART to Broadway. Um, now one of the questions I had uh, at the very beginning is when you started like to go into your process, what do you, mm -hmm. when you're writing a song, what do you start with? Do you start like looking for inspiration? Do you start writing words? Uh, well, with this particular piece, I was starting from Tolstoy's text. So I, I literally had, like, uh, when I started, like, a 70-page Word document of the original text of Great Comet. Um, and then I kind of broke that, you know, I first edited it a bunch and, like, deleted a bunch of stuff, and then kind of broke it into little songs. And so then when I had the song, then I really start from a place of character. So I'm always, like, kind of, okay, well, who is this character? What is this character talking about? And then what kind of music is going to best support that? Very cool. Because you, I know you have a lot of really different um, musical styles within this show. Yeah. And that's part of actually what we're going to get into in some of the nerdier stuff. Because right. in the <laughs> days leading up to the original recording, mm -hmm. um, you started making uh, playlists on Spotify yes. and putting them on Twitter that included songs from all ranges that were for that particular number. And there's a yeah. lot of nerdy stuff on it. Yes. For example, <laughs> Uh, the prologue, it, I saw X-Men's uh, animated series theme. Oh, sure. Which, such a good theme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have Twilight Zone, Psycho, and then you have a handful of stuff from Zelda, specifically Ocarina of Time. Yes. And not just here, because in the liner notes of Ghost Quartet, mm -hmm. another show that you did, <laughs> uh, Zelda is there among Fables, Dark Tower, Castlevania, into the Woods, yeah. and 2001 A Space Odyssey. We are going to specifically talk about Zelda here. How did you get into the Zelda franchise? Uh, I mean, right from NES. So, you know, the Nintendo, I had I had an Atari, it was actually how I first got into video Ooh. games, and like played a lot of hardcore Atari. And we can actually talk about that, like there's a very specific uh, missile command sound that's in the comet, in, in the score of Great Comet. Oh my, um, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's you can listen, it's at the end of the abduction when Mario comes in, it's like, you will not enter my house, scoundrel. And then like the animal goes, bah, 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 and then you just hear a synthesizer go like, bah, 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 bah. oh, it's that. Yeah, and it's in Missile Command when you get an extra life. That's the sound of an extra life. It's like, bah, bah, bah. I mean, it's Whoa. not, it's not literally that, but it's inspired by that. That's sound. that's incredible. Yeah, and it's like the, for me, like that moment in the show is very much a kind of like game over moment of like now that's the abduction is game of like Mario just comes in and destroys you and she's the boss. And then you go and, into um, that number and it's intense. Yeah, and then we're in like mad, mad, mad electronic world. Um, but yeah, but, uh, but the very first Zelda game, I was just, I was so blown away by it. I was just hooked on it and like, I mean, literally my parents had to like, you know, drag me away from the <laughs> machine on more than one occasion. Um, uh. And that was, you know, what's amazing to me too is like that was back when like if you got stumped on something, like you were just stuck. Yeah. And like eventually there was like a 1-800 hotline that you could like call <laughs> to like get a hint. Or like, you know, they were like in the back of like weird, you know, bookstores. There were like little hint manuals. But sometimes you would just be stuck for a while. Like I remember in, in that first game, there's like a um, forest maze that you have to go through. Yes, the Lost Woods. Lo yeah, and like, you know, I just, it just took me, I just, when I finally did it, it was like pure coincidence that I did it. Like I don't, yeah. I didn't have the book telling me up, up, left, left, right, right, or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Northwest. Southwest? Something like that? <laughs> I mean, it's something like probably incredibly simple, but for like, you know, little, yeah, what, for ten, when, what year was that? 1986? Six, five? Six? Six? I think 86. Yeah, so I would have been 10. Yeah. So for 10-year-old me, it was just like, <laughs> I didn't have any like method for it. I was just like running around. Um, yeah, so that one and then Adventure of Link as well. Like mm. I was just, you know, just blown away by both of those. And they had a profound impact on me as a as an artist like as a creator like i just thought there was something so beautiful about those games 
Yeah, I, I I love how you brought up Zelda 2 because it is it is a weird like black sheep, but yeah. it's a game that yeah. oh, a couple members of my team are like huge. Zelda I team loved fans. it. It was very fresh. Like the, the remember the caves were so annoying in the dark because like there were these caves. caves. Oh god, Those caves. they were infuriating. <laughs> yeah. So when you were writing Great Comet, how did when and like what were at what point were you just like oh. Zelda things could work mm -hmm. here, or is that something that's always like in the back of your mind? I mean, I guess it was more for me like, oh, like video game things can work here. And for me, just like Zelda is the pinnacle of video game. Like they, they are the greatest games I've ever played. Like specifically those those first two, and then Ocarina of Time was a profound one for me. Um, and then I also played the the, the Super NES one. Uh, Link to the Past. Link to the Past, yeah, yeah. And then what's the fourth one? I feel like I've played that one too. Uh, Link's um, Awakening on the Game Boy? Oh, no, no, I didn't play that one. Uh, otherwise... What's the next console one? Uh, oh, Ma Majora's Mask. Mask. Yeah, yeah, so I played that Another one. Another yeah, brilliant yeah, yeah. game. Beautiful, beautiful. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So I guess for me there was something about, um, I, and also like I just like growing up on like, you know, Star Wars and Raiders of Lost Ark, like there's something about like the, the tempo of both video games and those kind of movies where you have like these events. Like when you go into a dungeon, it's like, now we're in a dungeon and like now this is a big event that's going to have a climax with the boss and like that's exciting and when the boss is killed like that's like a thrilling and emotional dramaturgical moment that happens um and so i feel like when i was constructing great comet there just seemed to be like set pieces like that like in, in and in this sounds so strange but like i think of like the opera as a dungeon like it's like you like enter the opera scene and then you're in this long 10 minute sequence that like goes to all these different places and there's like riddles within it and puzzles and and there's you know i, I don't know and then there's the it, opera it's itself, very abstract which is this, and actually it's nice that you actually brought that up because one of the things that i got out of the actual opera within mm -hmm. that scene it's very ambient it's got this incredible instrumental like uh avant-garde stuff because you'll see bell mm -hmm. uh it has these very interesting like horror game kind of vibes sure for and sure I, yeah, yeah. I was like this could be something that would work really well into like actual video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a really cool thing that you're doing. If you were ever uh, offered to do a video game, would you ever do it? Oh yeah, I'd be very, I mean, if I, it, I'd have to, you know, it'd have to be a game I liked, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I love video game music so much and I think it can be so evocative and like so weird and avant-garde. I mean, I was a big World of Warcraft yes. person for a long time too. And some of those, like I, I specifically, it was like one of the deserts, I think it's T Terranos maybe. But one of them had a really weird, like avant-garde, it was like a classical orchestra playing like tone clusters and stuff. And just these really beautiful things. And I think it's like, it's a, it's just a, for whatever reason, it's a platform on which really avant-garde music can work really, really well and feel really accessible. Cause it like puts you into, I mean, you're playing a video game. So it's, super, right. it's something super populist, um, but yet it's like using, it's drawing from the avant-garde, which I find fascinating. That's, mm -hmm. That is a great answer. And y'all heard it here first. Guys, get him to do a game. <laughs> oh my God, there'd be so many games. I would just love. It. Sure. Um, so, you got nominated for three Tonys. Mm -hmm. You are finishing up your run as Pierre in a role that you originated tonight. Mm -hmm. What is next down the pipeline? I know you've been working on a Moby Dick show. Yes. So Moby Dick is kind of the next big one for me, um, and that's a giant piece. It's a it's a four act long, probably about five hour long durational piece. So Ooh. the audience will have dinner together, and the audience will be the you know the crew of the ship, and. Um, yeah, it's just like this mammoth novel, and we're trying to really respect the form of the novel, which is not just a story, but like it goes, it famously goes on all these long diversions and tangents about whaling, and you know, one chapter is like an encyclopedia entry, and so we're actually trying to embrace that aspect of the form and do all the weird whaling stuff as well. So it's yeah. gonna be like a sleep no more experience where it is an immersive theater piece. Yeah, I mean, uh, less, I mean, I guess the, the, the thing that I think like distinguishes like Sleep No More and other immersive theater from some of the stuff that I do is like, I still am very invested in narrative and in right. the audience, you know, having a, 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 a very streamlined linear experience from the start, middle, end. You know, whereas, sleep you know, no more is, is more choose your own adventure, you know, which I love. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Sleep No More and I'd love to make a show like that someday. Um, but I think for right now, because I'm just such a fan of literature and story and narrative. Right. Um, you know, so for me, it's it's less about it being immersive and like giving the audience an event, and more about just like acknowledging that the audience is in the room with us, and that the audience and the performers make up this experience together. So I just don't like pretending that the audience isn't there, or pretending that the performers don't see the audience. Um, and I like also having the audience be able to see the audience. Like that also feels like an important part of theater going to me that you have having this communal experience together. Yeah, I, and yeah. that's something that you can definitely see in Ray Comet mm -hmm. in the set design 
and especially the Tony performance. Yeah, I for sure. That was, a great yeah, way that was very fun to be a part of that. I remember yeah. watching you yeah. go up on stage and start playing, and I was like, oh, I love this. This is so great. Oh, uh, can, I, can I say one other thing, though, about, about bosses? Yes. Because I didn't want to say the other. Oh, and there's one more thing I want, I want to talk to about the Ocarina of yeah. Time thing, too. Oh, yeah. Because just, I want the, the other big part of Great Combat that for me was very influenced by my playing of video games is the sequence from starting with uh, it, it, with a call to Pierre. So where Mario comes and calls Pierre out of his cave, and then in my mind, Mario basically gives Pierre a quest, yes. and like his quest is you've got to you've got to get rid of Anatole, and you've got to like you know make Natasha feel better. <laughs> it's basically his quest, and so then he like goes through a series of dungeons. Like the first dungeon is just finding the dungeon. So find Anatole is him like just trying to locate where the dungeon is. And then he goes into Pierre and Anatole, and Anatole is like definitely the first boss, and that's the music that is the most overtly video game. So there's a lot of like just like eight bit noise going yeah, on. Yeah, because that's in that. where I, uh, the Metroid theme I saw. Yeah, I like, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Definitely. So that's a huge part of the influence for like that Sonic palette. And then he beats that boss. But then like the game takes a twist and Natasha gets suicide and then there's another boss he didn't even know about, which is Andre. Right. So he's like got to deal with that boss and like that boss kind of has like a weird twist ending because he doesn't really defeat it. And then Natasha is like the final boss. And then to me like Great Comet is like the the beautiful music that plays over the credits of a video game like when you've beaten it. Yes. Because he, beat he beats the boss, like the last boss is like Natasha's depression and suicide. <laughs> and he beats it with an act of kindness. And so then his reward is the Great Comet. <laughs> Hey, it so works. I that's it. the video game dramaturgy of, of the last 20 minutes of the show. Amazing. Yeah. So before we get into the rapid fire, mm -hmm. you did talk a lot about Ocarina of Time. Oh, yeah. How, what, what kind of influence did that game have well, on so you that, the show? Well, so that game is, is actually uh, is quite a storied past. So I, right after college, uh, I kind of didn't know what to do, and all of my friends were going to grad school. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll just go to grad school. So I went to grad school at UC Boulder. And the school was great, but I was in the program for about a week and I realized I did not want to be in academia anymore. It just like wasn't where I wanted to be. Uh, just what wasn't what I wanted to be doing with music in my life. I wanted to like, you know, move. and I had some friends who had just moved to San Francisco. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to move to San Francisco okay. with them. But I've got to finish out this semester because I was also a TA and like, you know, I had to like keep my financial aid, like I had to finish the semester to do that. So I just had to stay there and finish the semester. But I was like, I'm so not invested. Like I don't care about getting good grades because I'm dropping out. So like, what am I going to do? And that was right when Ocarina of Time came out. Mm. Like it literally came out that fall. And so I like went to like, you know, the Best Buy and bought that system. And that was what sustained me through my one semester That's of grad great. school was playing Ocarina of Time. And that game is obviously just so beautiful. But the music in that game, there's so many moments of the music and the like the one that's most overtly in Great Comet is the Balaga theme. Yes, Garuda where you Valley. have yeah, which is Garuda Valley, which is the, the horse who's a dun -tuk -a dun -tuk -a dun like that is just a direct uh, homage to that that music from Ocarina of Time. That's yeah. awesome. And the other one that really moved me in that one was um uh the ranch Epona's theme. Oh, the horse the doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Like there's something that that and it's like on this it's on this kind of like bad MIDI like harmonica sound which I find so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, so that sound has like found its way into my music as well. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> okay, now that I have that, uh, let's yes. go into rapid fire. So, first game you ever played? Uh, probably Space Invaders. I mean, nice. something on Atari for sure. First console you bought with your own money? Uh oh, the, uh, the second the Atari seventy eight hundred, I think it was. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Which actually was a, it was like all my friends were buying Nintendos, but I like I had all these old Atari games, so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy the seventy eight hundred. And then, like a month later, I was like, "Mom, I want a Nintendo." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. "Oh, it's all right." Mm. Yeah. Uh, favorite console? Probably the original NES. Yeah. Favorite video game? You can do top three. Oh God! I mean, the top three would be those three would, Zeldas, would probably. Be, would be Ocarina of Time, Link to the Past, NES. Uh, definitely Ocarina of Time, and definitely the original, and then maybe the third spot. Maybe I would throw just World of Warcraft in there. Yeah. Nice. Uh, least favorite video game? Oh, uh, I mean, you know, for whatever, and this, I, I'm really puzzled about it. I've never been able to get into any Final Fantasy game. So I can't call that my least favorite game, but it's one that puzzles me because I know it's like so profoundly loved by so many people. There are and certain I've tried games a few that are of them. incredible, but yeah. then there's others that are just like, why? I mean, I'm, I'm trying, I've, I have the PS4 one, you know, the one that just came out. Now, oh, 15. I, I don't know, it just like hasn't grabbed me. Uh, try 7. 7? Seven? 7 is incredible. Who I, what do I play it on? PS4. Oh, I can play it on PS4? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try 7. Yeah. Um, <laughs> favorite score from a video game? Score? Yes. Oh, I thought you meant like, uh, 
like numbers. Yeah, um, uh, you can do top three. Def well. Definitely Ocarina of Time. Definitely Ocarina of Time. Uh, most recent console you bought? PS4. PS4. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm really I'm like this close to getting the Switch. Yeah, for very good for choice. specifically for Zelda. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last game you played? Uh, Hearthstone. Nice. On my phone about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, what is your go-to video game? Uh, right now it's Hearthstone. I mean, so for me, I, World of Warcraft, I was deeply, deeply obsessed with for a while, and I got to a point where I actually had to quit for my own <laughs> you know, mental <laughs> well-being. So hell, I find Hearthstone to be actually such a nice little, I can just like get a little taste of World of Warcraft, and it's like the games are really short, you know. Yeah, they're, it's they're nice. It's a nice little thing to dabble in, yeah. All right, and last question. If you could make a musical out of any video game franchise, what would it be and why? Oh, God. Um... Much as I want to say is Zelda, I think it would actually be Metroid. I feel like there's something about Ooh. that sci-fi world and like how dark it is and like like the score too and like just like it's just like it's just scary and like this feels really desolate and I think it's really beautiful and I feel like that could be an incredible, you know, sci-fi and musicals haven't really done so well in the past, but I feel yeah. like it's a, it's an untapped territory. That is such a great answer, and I yeah. don't think I could have asked for a better way to end good, this. Good. Uh, Dave, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank um, you so much. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe, and hit that bell to hit it to check out all of our or to join our notification squad. That's the thing. Uh, great Comet is on Broadway eight shows a week here at the Imperial Theater. For more information, go to greatcometbroadway.com. You can find Dave at davemolloy.com and Dave underscore Molloy on Twitter. You can check out me at uh, Luca underscore Starks on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Guys, go see the show. It's really, really good. Thanks for watching.